I don't know about today's generation, but if you're a boomer or a Gen Xer, historically there were always two necessities on every grocery list that hung on the fridge, especially in my Italian Sicilian American home. And those two items were Coca-Cola and ginger ale. But those two specific items weren't just refreshing beverages, oh no. They were a miracle elixir sent from the gods to heal everything that ailed you. Got the flu? Have some ginger ale. A stomach ache? Have a little coke. Better yet, some ginger ale. It'll settle your stomach, moms would always say. I myself must have heard that sentence uttered a million times over the years. Well, apparently mothers and grandmothers are medical geniuses because according to flight attendants and travel experts the world over, the magic of ginger ale extends all the way to 35,000 feet above the earth and has been actually scientifically proven. Yes, you heard that right. Scientifically proven to be the best beverage to consume while flying on a plane. Hey, hold on there, don't swipe away just yet. Get your finger off that mouse. I'm serious, this apparently is based on real science. And you know what they say about denying science these days? I think it's even a crime here in California. But still skeptical? Clickbait, you say? Well, don't be, because I have receipts. According to Travel and Leisure magazine, a study conducted by Germany's Fraunhofer Institute for Building Physics has proven a theory that our taste buds act differently when we fly. Why? Well, that's because the low pressure on airplanes reduces the sensitivity of human taste buds for both sweet and savory, or salty, by 20 to 30 percent. Oh sure, you can always reach for the most refreshing beverage ever invented, the Coca-Cola, but maybe you're a scotch and soda guy, or simply prefer bottles and bottles of water, which of course is the healthiest option. But come on, seriously, bottled water? That's so 1990s. But why does food and drink taste different on a plane than on the ground? Well, again, according to the science. Okay, first of all, the only thing we were blinded by is science! That never gets old. Nope. And tell me this. It's the drier air and cabin pressure that can dull our sense of smell and taste, thus making food smell and taste differently than on the ground. And since most aircraft cabins are pressurized to between 6 and 8,000 feet above sea level, well then that means food and drink in a plane taste about as awful as it does in miserable places such as Aspen or Breckenridge, Colorado. Wait, what? No way! Oh, that's great! Anyway, according to travel and leisure reporter Andrea Romano, she writes that because of this altitude pressure difference, tastes such as sweetness and saltiness, or savoriness if you will, are impacted the most. But that's just not some travel and leisure reporter's opinion, oh no, because she consulted an expert. Nutritionist Lauren Grosskopf, who is an LDN, yeah, I had to Google that too. That's a licensed dietitian nutritionist, and she also has a Master's of Science degree. Ms. Koskoff says the saltiness of a drink like the Bloody Mary or even just plain tomato juice can actually seem a bit dull, leaving a fresher and sweeter taste behind. So Bloody Marys often taste better in the air by providing a sweet and spicy taste that gives humans more satiety. Yeah, I had to Google that too. That means feeling satisfied. But for those who prefer non-alcoholic beverages, when it comes to ginger ale, specifically the drier varieties as opposed to sweeter golden ales, when you're on a plane, a ginger ale's extra sweetness may not register on your taste buds, making your ginger drink extra dry and sharp, making it much more refreshing in the air than back on Earth. Well, I sure hope NASA is subscribed to the channel. But Grosskopf says that ginger can also be especially good for travelers because of its medicinal benefits. For centuries, ginger has been a remedy for nausea, indigestion, and muscle pain, and as an anti-inflammatory long before it was a soft drink. And the expert dietitian concluded by saying, ginger can help ease stomach upset with nervous flyers. So like I said, your mom was a genius. So who does the world have to thank for this amazing ginger-based elixir? Well, ginger ale, of course, is a ginger-flavored carbonated soft drink which can be consumed on its own or used as a mixer, often with spirit or alcohol-based drinks. There are two main types of ginger ale, the golden style, which is credited to the Irish doctor Thomas Joseph Cantrell. However, the dry style, such as its famous namesake Canada Dry, also called the pale style, a paler drink with a much milder ginger flavor, was created by Canadian John McLaughlin. 
John J. McLaughlin, a highly educated chemist and pharmacist, having already established a Canadian soda water bottling plant in 1890, in 1904 McLaughlin began developing flavor extracts to add to the water. Later that year, he would introduce what he dubbed pale dry ginger ale, the bubbly drink that would be patented in 1907 as Canada Dry Ginger Ale. The new drink became so popular that Canada Dry products were accepted by appointment to the vice regal household of the Governor General of Canada. But the dry style also became really popular in the United States during the Prohibition era when alcohol was outlawed from January 1920 until December 1933. So during those 13 years, many Americans resorted to making their own alcohol at home sometimes called bathtub gin, or that famous rocket fuel moonshine in stills hidden in the hills of rural America. But let's face it, it tasted pretty nasty. However, millions of homemade distillers discovered when their bathtub gin was mixed with the new Canada dry ginger ale, well, oh boy, it was actually drinkable. Well, suddenly ginger ale started flying off store shelves faster than toilet paper during a pandemic. So not only was ginger a hot redhead on Gilligan's Island, but it also was a natural herb with healing properties. Come to think of it, ginger on Gilligan's Island could do that too. However, in this case, the ginger could also be used to help ease the upset stomachs of nervous flyers. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt this video with some breaking news just now coming across the Maximus News Desk. It appears that there is actually no real ginger in ginger ale. In a shocking development, according to not just one but multiple lawsuits against the Canada Dry Company, although Canada Dry bills itself as being made from real ginger, it actually only contains a microscopic drop of ginger flavored extract. In a 2018 lawsuit, Julie Fletcher claims she was misled by Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, which makes Canada dry, and bought into the idea that the magical beverage was a healthier alternative to regular sodas because it was made from ginger root. But Canada Dry's ginger flavor extract, she said, is not real ginger as reasonable consumers understand that term. But Canada Dry's ginger is manufactured in a lab with the extraction process removing almost all the ginger entirely. Julie said she regularly bought ginger ale by the leaders for her kids when they were sick because she knew that the ginger root can calm an upset stomach. While the soda actually really does contain some ginger compounds, it's literally only minuscule, amounting to less than two parts per million. Canada Dry even used commercials where workers pull up the plant's roots on Jack's ginger farm with a voiceover saying, real ginger, real taste. It's a nice surprise. Canada Dry Ginger Ale, real ginger, real taste. However, within six months of adding the false real ginger claim, Canada Dry sales skyrocketed by almost 9% and continued to increase every year thereafter. Canada Dry's own marketing team even attributed the sales growth to Canada Dry's powerful message, touting it as a healthier option. However, that case was dismissed when Canada Dry decided to settle all pending class action lawsuits in 2020, when Canada Dry agreed to remove the words made from real ginger from all packaging, while shelling out undisclosed hundreds of thousands of dollars to litigants. And now, back to our regularly scheduled video. And Travel and Leisure's Andrea Romano's final point about why drinking ginger ale on an airplane is good for you is that it also helps travelers avoid a common problem with other carbonated soft drinks like Diet Coke because apparently there's more carbonation in Diet Coke and it takes longer to dissipate at altitude because we all know what a pain that can be. But then she even says that Diet Coke is actually one of the worst drinks to order from a flight attendant since it slows them down during drink service. Oh, I see. And why do you think ordering a Diet Coke instead of a ginger ale is slowing down flight attendants? Well, how about because most people are, if not downright afraid of flying, are just uncomfortable and need to relax. So they order some of that airplane bathtub gin. And what's the best mixer to make that taste better at 35,000 feet? Yep, good old ginger ale. Thus, the food cart is always full of ginger ale ahead of time, not Diet Coke. And anybody that flies knows that so the flight attendant won't have to make another trip back to the galley that he or she will suggest. How about a ginger ale instead?
Now that right there is some real Maximus Aviation science. Yes, science! However, in the end, for some reason, and no one really knows why, but in the air or on the ground, ginger ale has been associated with comfort and home for more than a century. And with or without alcohol and a tiny Pringles can packed with anxiety and insanity, people just want something, anything to help them relax and feel comfortable. And apparently that is the real magic of ginger ale. And believe it or not, I actually agree with this story. Whether real or imagined, ginger ale is just comforting and reminds us of the safety of mom and home. But I'll end with this. Canadian ginger ale sure is a lot more comforting mixed with another fantastic Canadian beverage, some Crown Royal. Please be sure to comment and share your thoughts on ginger ale on a plane. Do you drink it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Tell me what you do drink on a plane. Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. And as always, yeah, this is Maximus.